So last night I saw 3,000 Years of Longing, and this movie was mind-bending. I feel like the movie has so much thematic weight and so many beautiful symbolic images and ideas to break down. Like the movie's overall message, the title of the film, the meaning of the many stories within the film, the purpose of the djinn, and most importantly, the ending of the movie. I feel like I have a pretty thorough analysis of the film, so I hope you enjoy it. And anyone who has read the original book, The Djinn in the Nightingale's Eye, I would love to read and discuss your insights in the comments, so please let me know. So to break this movie down, we're gonna use three themes. One, nature of storytelling. We'll discuss the main message of the movie, the book this movie is based on, the meaning of the title of the movie, and the opening monologue. Two, willful imprisonment. We'll discuss Alethea's loneliness, Alethea's desires, Alethea and the Jinn's parallels, and Zephyr and the Jinn's romance. And three, desire without pursuit. We'll discuss the pregnant slave Gulten, brothers Ibrahim and Murad, Alethea's imaginary friend Enzo, the symbolic meaning of the Jinn, Alethea's rude neighbors, and the ending, and much more. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, nature of storytelling. When watching this movie, since it's so thematically dense and philosophical, you could probably guess that this movie is based on a book. And you'd be right. The original story is called The Djinn in the Nightingale's Eye. The story in this book is very similar to the film, with a few slight changes. However, thematically, I think the book and the film are trying to accomplish the exact same thing. In an interview with MGM, the filmmaker behind this movie, George Miller, said this movie is a story about the mysteries and paradoxes of life. The Djinn in the Nightingale's Eye, according to many different reviews, also has to do with these themes of the irony of mankind. Our desire for freedom without any responsibility, our desire for companionship but also independence, and also the danger of getting exactly what we want. And we will certainly cover all of these major ironic themes throughout this video. But I first want to briefly cover the importance of storytelling for humanity in this movie. In an early scene at Alithia's conference, the film describes how storytelling transcends time because it captures human nature. No matter how far we advance scientifically and technologically, we still return to ancient stories in mythology and religious texts for the remaining answers in life. These ancient stories heavily inspire the stories we tell today, whether they are multi-hundred million dollar comic book movies or classical art house films. And they teach us so much about life today in the 21st century. No matter how much we evolve, human nature stays as it is. And this film demonstrates that by traveling back and forth between various stories over thousands of years, and tying these stories together thematically, and even blending ancient mythology and current reality right before our eyes. So much about our human desire remains the same over the lifespan of the 3,000 plus year jinn in the story, hence why the film is called 3,000 Years of Longing. This theme of blending time periods, mythology, and reality is also demonstrated in the very opening monologue. Modern reality is described like an ancient mythical land, with descriptions like flying through the sky on metal wings, walking on the floor of the sea with webbed feet, and communicating miles away through glass tablets. So it's human nature that allows a 3,000 plus year old jinn and a middle-aged narratologist to converse, connect, relate, teach, learn, and even fall in love. Theme number two, willful imprisonment. It's pretty clear in this movie that Alithia is lonely, but has convinced herself she's content and happy. And unfortunately, after a devastating divorce, she uses the success of her career and her financial independence to convince herself that she is satisfied and free. However, while these achievements can be fulfilling, she also deeply desires pleasure, love, companionship, and true freedom with someone else. And there's actually a striking parallel to the Jinn's description of his time in the bottle at the bottom of the ocean, trapped by King Solomon. When trapped at the bottom of the ocean for thousands of years, the Jinn convinced himself it was where he belonged. He at first felt rage, then resorted to prayer then indulged in his own stories, and finally entered this self-deception. We can see Alithia in these exact same final stages of self-deception and imprisonment as well. She indulges in stories to escape her current reality, and when forced to face reality, she deceives herself into believing everything is perfect, when she knows it isn't. The Jinn even says, No one to know me, to feel me, to see me, something you can't imagine. And Alithia replies, I can. 
We see the jinn engage in self-imprisonment once again when he forces his love, Zephyr, to remain silent. Her third wish will set both of them free, but separate them, and he couldn't live on without being with her. And there are so many different parallels between the jinn's journey and Alethea's current life. Alethea and the jinn are both seeking true freedom and companionship, but they each find these things at first in the wrong way, through either force or self-deception. And in the end, they find the true path to companionship and freedom. Which brings me to theme number three, desire without pursuit. In the same interview with MGM, George Miller says, there is no story about wishing that isn't a cautionary tale. And very much so in this story and in these mini stories within this story and in life, it seems like the fulfillment of desire without pursuit often leads to misery. In just about every sub-story in this movie, those handed what they want would regret the fulfillment of their own desires, or at least pay for it in some tragic way. Althea is very much aware of this, which is part of why she refrains from making any wishes at all. Golten, once a slave, became far too inflated with pride and arrogance when the jinn made Prince Mustafa her lover and the father of her baby. This, of course, sparked jealousy and manipulation between the sultan and his wife, which led to both Mustafa and Golten's death. Ibrahim, when locked in the cell with plenty of women of his greatest desires, grew up to be a useless leader, so soft and spineless that he was almost like a big baby. Ibrahim's brother, Murad, as a ruler, becomes delusionally consumed with the power he's born into. He believes he's immortal and wants to kill every single rival. And when he finally meets a man who tells him fabulous stories, he calms down and is able to momentarily get away from his power-hungry ways. But when the storytelling man dies, Murad recognizes his misery and becomes weaker than even his brother, Ibrahim. And Alethea, very much, actually does a lot of what Murad does. She immerses herself in these beautiful ancient stories to temporarily escape her misery. Even as a child, she created Enzo, who accompanied her during times of loneliness. Althea's imagination is powerful, and she uses it to deal with her issues, which makes me believe the jinn and the mythical creatures Althea encounters before the jinn are within her own mind. To me, the visions, the stories, and the conversations are all her own subconscious push out of complacency and into true freedom and companionship. She even says earlier in the movie, her hallucinations are a warning not to be complacent. Alethea finally wishes to fall in love with the jinn, but this forced path to love was never the correct path in the first place. We see the jinn struggling with the electromagnetic waves that interfere with his own physical makeup. This parallels Alethea's inability to connect with her community as we see her elderly neighbors give her similar headaches to the jinn. After she realizes that forcing the relationship between her and the jinn is not the natural path her life was meant to take, she finally wishes the jinn was where he belonged and makes amends with her rude neighbors. The jinn represents Alethea's attachment to stories to cope with the dissatisfaction of her own life. And in the end of this story, the jinn returns only intermittently. This allows Alethea to indulge in her love for beautiful ancient stories, while gracefully facing reality, joining her community, and pursuing the things she always knew she desired. All right, that's my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos and please send me recommendations. And please let me know your thoughts and interpretations about this movie because I would love to hear them and discuss. I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.